So now we're going to talk about comebacks. And like I said a lot yesterday, when we were talking about comebacks, we're basically talking about uh, established acts, people that they have debuted before this year, uh, and what years they had. Some kind of some of the established acts, the best 2014 or whatever that sentence makes sense. Uh, 2014 and established boy groups. Uh, I'm not really going to say comebacks is hard for me because there is a lot in here that I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be hard for us to necessarily say a solid winner, but uh, these are all some solid. uh, These are all some solid artists uh, as I try to type things. Yeah, so let's let's go through them. Uh, So we talk about uh, one of the main. Sorry. Apparently, I keep forgetting that one and four changes my scenes on OBS. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but there we go. You saw what I was doing. B1A4 uh, kind of came back. Bilasa, if you will, if you are of that persuasion, <laughs> came out with their track Solo Day. Uh, they had members kind of do really cool things on, on their own. And then they came out with this track a uh, good five months ago. And it's... It was easy to forget that this was a pretty solid track that was really successful on music shows, really shown well, uh, and it was a really cool track. But B1A4 has kind of carved out a very cool, like, a niche of being kind of quirky, uh, but it, without being, you know, crayon pop quirky or, you know, like, yeah. that kind of quirky. They have their quirkiness, but they are still, you know, a boy group. You know, like, uh, yeah. still a high tier I mean, boy group. You know, B one A four is is just kind of quality fun. Uh, like, I mean, I mean, that's like the best way I could think to describe it. It's just kind of quality fun. Like, the, it's not like oh, like you said, it's not the cram pop level where we're being goofy and that's kind of our gimmick. It's just like it's kind of our personality to kind of have fun and, and be silly and you know, and just kind yeah. of go through it like that. And they had a, had a fun video for the song with, uh, kind of, they shot it in LA, which is kind of, uh, cool. And they, they're just driving around a convertible, you know, just trying to having it, having a day. And it was a catchy song. It was a, it was a fun video. And I think B1A4 kind of had a solid year. And, uh, I, I still say, uh, going back to, it was, you know, he appeared in it in 2013. I think it was 2013. Uh, Bado in reply 1994. I still, there was a part mm-hmm. of me that was hoping, uh, at the end of that show that his character, when he it was revealed who his, like, ult- who he and his happily ever after love interest, whatever it was revealed, that was going to be Hoya from reply 1997. That I'm, <laughs> I imagine I'm not the only one. Cause they were teasing that, like, he had a crush on, on, on the, the male lead. And like, you know what? Bora, Baro, Hoya. Hmm? That would have been the most adorable couple level ever. Uh, but yeah, B1A4. A fun track, fantastic track. Y'all should check it out. Uh, moving on to another, another comeback. I think another pretty, really solid comeback in from a group that is kind of that next tier, uh, quality group from a from a you know that that you know that group that came from that label that didn't do idol groups and then did this idol group and now became one of those uh high tier idol groups uh infinite or infinite <laughs> infinite uh came uh, <laughs> with, came back i think a couple of times uh with a couple of solid tracks with uh last romeo and back uh mm-hmm. and had not only that had uh were you know had drama appearances uh where hoya the aforementioned hoya uh and i believe i don't remember who it was the the other one from the other one <laughs> from infinite uh had uh featuring roles on on what was it uh, my lovely girl with uh uh crystal uh the show with crystal yeah. and rain and they featured heavily on the, on that show as the as the fictional group called Infinite Power <laughs> that had <laughs> okay yes uh, and it was L that's was, what we'll uh, go with <laughs> uh it was it was kind of funny uh but it was uh 
it was it was a fun appearance and and I've, I've talked about that show but you know they they've done work you know being on shows being on dramas yeah. you know they had their own releases and they had a really cool good year this year infinite uh, like i feel like i feel like they took that next step like they kind of grew a little bit like it, it wasn't the same infinite you were used to hearing um the the kind of style and the, and the the music changed a little bit um but it was still a lot of sequence suits and, and one girl in a video <laughs> stuff but uh, i i really i i like infinite and i like infinite a lot and one of my things i've always said about infinite is that they need to grow a little bit and i i think i kind of got that from them and i was really happy yeah. and, and like i said still, they they're starting to expand out into those other things still, that they and they still backed it up with what they stuff. what they know how to do they still back to what they know how to mm-hmm. do, and that's like performance, like the performance, uh, the dance performance, like that's their bread and butter, and like they back it up with Willem Entertainment's quality production work, like uh, while still at the same time, you know, it's what you you know and love, you know, Willem Entertainment's putting some quality compositions behind them, them putting the solid performance, and then them growing a little bit uh, on top of that, so. Uh, a net positive, if you will. Uh, really fantastic, tough. Infinite. Uh, really fantastic game. I want you back, 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 back. Uh, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a cool track. Uh, all right. So, Infinite, another solid contender. Um, we're going to talk about a group that, uh, you're not as familiar with, and I'm not really as familiar with, but, but I know had an interesting transformative year, another transformative year. Uh, uh, we're talking J-pop here now, with Exile, yeah. <laughs> and those. Well, that are, I are... know of Exile, but I'm I'm just I've never taken the chance to really like look into Exile. Uh, they had you know a big kind of a transition. They've had some really cool stuff with Exile Tribe, a uh, really cool track with Exile Tribe. They had their track with I think the main one that I wanted to point out was uh that caught my attention and I really dug was New Horizon, which was a video that actually was able to really communicate with me <laughs> exactly what mm-hmm. was going on like at this point in the group. Like the fact that I got the understanding, I this video without knowing anything about the group, back you know, history, without knowing anything about you know the fandom or what's going on, I got an understanding of what this meant. It was it they it was it didn't overstate it, but it was very much understood. Oh, okay, this is the big transition. These people reflecting, all these people putting their energy forward, to, and then introducing these new members. It's all about this. Uh, you know, the established, uh, you know, birthing the new, you know, kind of putting their, a piece of themselves into birthing the new, the new era or the new, tra- you know, the new, uh, generation of exile, you know, kind of the, the new members. And it was a really cool way to kind of introduce these new members to, uh, to people that are fans of exile. Like, you know, hey, here are your new members of exile and then, you know, features them prominently. Uh, takes a moment to kind of feature all the, the, the established, like many of the established members and connect them together. And it was just kind of cool. Like the fact that they were able to communicate that to me as somebody who has never really heard exile before. And I, like, I, I understood. <laughs> I got what the moment was about. I got what the, st- the, 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 the feeling was about. Uh, did, did you get a chance to check, check out this track? And check out yeah, it, it checked out some of the the exile stuff. I thought it was really good, like, but it's still kind of this thing where I'm like, eh, I, I don't know if I want to really, really get into exile, you know. <laughs> but it, uh, it was it was something that like I I like what I what I heard, and I I I I feel like I I feel like I want to, but it's just like, uh, it, it, and it, it seems like work. At some point, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it is with pop music sometimes. With, like, East Asian pop culture with these, like, big, like, uh, legacy groups, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then not only do you have Exile, you have things like Exile Tribe, which is the, the kind of the, the smaller unit, uh, which had, they had another fun, fun track with a 24 world, uh, 
it is something to get into. Uh, <laughs> look at these dudes acting all hard, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. It is something that there is something to sink your teeth into. But it's like, do you want to dive in that badly? And are you ready? Are you ready for you know yeah. diving in? Uh, I definitely am looking forward to checking out more stuff because I, I I think one of our I think missives for next year 2015 and forward is uh, to start putting the to keep putting more effort in putting the Juku back in Hali Juku. <laughs> yes. Because uh, we need to at least make the effort to kind of really start getting uh, exposed to uh, J pop. And what's going out there? Because there is a lot of cool. Th- there are a lot of cool things going on in multiple genres, and not just the the idol uh, culture. There's you know, there's there's hip hop, there's rock, there's you know, there's metal, there's uh, there's pop music, there's all types of genres. It is a huge market with a lot of customers and a, and a big uh, and a big industry that is worth exploring. So, uh, that is going to be our missive. That is going to be our plan for 2015. We're going to put the Juku back in Hali Juku. Believe that. Uh, but with that said, let's get back to talking about nothing but K pop. Uh- <laughs> okay. So, our next one, um, is another one that I think everybody was looking forward to, but didn't expect what we were going to get. And then in that unexpected of what we were going to get, really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, which was the comeback of 2 p.m. Like, I was super excited for the comeback of 2 p.m. Um, 2 p.m. is one of these groups that I've kind of been following since I've been in the K-pop. Uh, yeah. our, our boy Jay Park is, is a yes. kind of a legacy 2 p.m. member, even though sometimes yes. he may not want you to know that. <laughs> uh, but 2 p.m. We'll never has forget, always kind of we'll had this has always kind of had this sound that was kind of a lot similar to super junior sound. Um, and and, sometimes, yeah. And and they were really good at it. And, and, and that's kind of the sound that they've had for a while. And they've done these kind of upbeat style things, but not like this. And they came out with go crazy and it was just kind of a departure like we didn't even know how to feel about it at first but then you listen to it a couple times and you go through it and and you 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 have your 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 moments with it where you're where you don't like it but it wins you over because it's fucking 2 p.m and that's what they do me me i was i was in all the way from the beginning like (laughs) i was just like all this is my new jam this is my new party (laughs) i'm I'm just gonna turn up i'm just this is i'm gonna turn up this is how we yeah. do. Uh, and it was just so much fun. Like, the video is so much fun. All, like, all the different versions of the videos are so much fun. Yeah. Uh, it is just a fantastic track. Like, it's, uh, the style of it is so cool. Um, that, that outfit that Nikun is wearing is not in any way good <laughs> no. whatsoever. But, you know, we'll live with that, uh, for now. <laughs> Junke and 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 that album, the album that it is on, has some really great tracks too. Uh, with some writing contributions yeah. by uh, your boy Junke, uh, in, right there in the middle, and you know a little bit more of the creative freedom and like uh that more of that two p.m. sound, and it's a really cool album. And it was good to have two p.m. back and in a different way, uh, but still, it still feels like. A different facet of 2 p.m. Like this is this is yeah. a new side of of a group we're familiar with. Like, uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. I mean, like, I I fucking love 2 p.m. and and I think this is what they needed. They needed to shake it up a little bit, like because there are some other groups that we're gonna mention that that kind of have this kind of similar style you know like with, with a lot of the fun in their videos and then their styling of music and like uh the the kind of composition of how they do things but like 2 p.m rock this like they've been doing it for years and i mean that's just because they've been in the business for years and they know what the fuck they're doing love 2 p.m yes love 2 p.m we can't say enough about yeah. 2 p.m uh it's just amazing <laughs> Uh, I think we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Michingo uh, go crazy, go crazy. Yeah. Uh, so 
I don't know what to do about this next one, PD. I think you're gonna have to do we, it. We have to. We have to. We have to talk about them because they did have oh. a solid year, career-wise, and so much uh, so, I so much so that I think me and you both heard songs from them this year that we were like, "Oh man, I like that." Oh, it's by them. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, Bangtan Sonian, aka BTS, aka Bulletproof Boy Scouts, aka that group that has the na- the guy that's named Rat Monster. Um, Bangtan Boys. Yeah. Bangtan Boys. Uh, had so uh, they came back this year that they were solidly working throughout the year. You know, some of their releases include War of Hormone, which, uh, you linked to me and I was like, I was underwhelmed. In general, but it was it was a solid track. Uh, they had uh, you know they had uh, tracks danger, the danger. Uh, goddamn rat monster, you ridiculous ugly motherfucker. Um, <laughs> danger, Wait, was, danger was, was one a, of the ones that. Yeah, it was a track that, that kind where of was like a little bit. It was like okay, okay, Bontesonian, you got me on that one. You, you did okay with yeah. this one. I'll give you this one. Touche. Touche, <laughs> even. Um, but I think it's undeniable that they have a solid fan base. They have really made an impact. I mean, as much as we want to say, like, oh, they're a boy group, so of course they have a, a fan base. They're automatically going to have a fan base just being from be, pre, being pretty Korean boys. It's not that easy. They actually had to no. work and earn their spot. They did, you know, they put in the work that they needed to do, and we can't take that away from them. They they put nah, in the work, they put they, in the years. They, just like every, every K-pop boy group out there, they put in the work they had to do uh, you know, being trainees, getting casted, getting put into the group. So we have to give them the props. And, and you know, and I, making I, it on this level is not easy. And I also think we turned around on them a little bit because they gave up on the super tryhard in their yeah. debut that they had. Like, their debut was, like, super tryhard, you know? Super like, tryhard and silly. <laughs> yeah. And I think this was more K-pop styled group that they kind of turned into this year. Um, and they kept a little bit of the try hard swagger that they had. And that's fine to keep that kind of swag that you had with that. But it, it is totally different than their, than their debut. Yeah. I think it, it, my thing was back to where, where I said, I think when we first talked about this song was, which it, for their, the, from where they were, they needed to go down to one of two directions. Either they need to, needed to sincerely find their own style and sound and be sincere in their approach to hip hop, you know, less kind of, uh, you know, uh, affectation and more sincere of using, you know, finding their voice or, get really good at being a k-pop boy band <laughs> uh mm-hmm. and i think they decided to kind of more go towards the getting really good at being a k-pop boy band because that's a more safe route uh while they still have their solid fan base i think having their their voices is, is i think i as much as we kind of had our problems with the, that what they were initially uh keeping a little bit of that it, it should be something that they should for the sake of who they are, uh, do, uh, and hopefully it's hard because it's like, we're, we're, we're very, it, it's hard to win us over once you kind of turned us off. Like, like they did, <laughs> like, with, with us, like we kind of, we kind of tend to kind of, when somebody is like, turns us off that badly, we kind of, we kind of dismiss you. <laughs> we just kind of like, nah, nah, we, we ain't feeling it. And then we kind of get stubborn about it because we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bonta and Sonya had a really fantastic year, uh, and they have their solid fan base. Uh, so I, you got to give them their props. Um, but moving on to, uh, yeah. to another group that had a fantastic year, uh, release wise and, uh, music wise, uh, Beast, aka Batuste. 
And it's funny because I I had to stop and think like uh, some of the uh, on some of the tracks, uh, and and I'm actually gonna have to look it up. But uh, Beast, I'm looking at. I was looking at charts. Twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. They put out. Oh yeah, twelve thirty and Good Luck this year. Yes, now I remember. Mm -hmm. Both of them were actually pretty (laughs) solid tracks. Because it took me a second. Like, it took me a second to get... Because the Be- Beast isn't a group that I'm, I'm super following uh, at any given point. But I know that they are yeah. out there. And I know that they do good stuff. And uh, Toshi, uh, 30 Bloom, uh, or, uh, 12 uh, minutes, 30 seconds, or 12 hours, 30 minutes. I don't know. Um, 12, 30. Uh, and Good Luck were both pretty solid tracks. And they had... Fantastic year selling <laughs> for sure because uh Gaon uh yeah. as we said yesterday, uh Gaon did the yesterday I was mentioning Gaon's uh, uh girl group uh uh sales charts when you're physical and digital. Uh and right up on there uh, they did today and I'm gonna pull it up again, but they did today uh the boy group version of that. And it's going to, it reflected a lot of kind of what we know about, uh, you know, as EXO killed it in physicals, of course, because they've got the fandom. And that's, you know, kind of how, where, where you get those physical sales. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to pull it up again. All right. This is exciting radio. Um, all right, here it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, in, in digital sales, you know, top one was Big Bang, but that was, a lot of it was Taeyong and GD and Taeyong kind of get counted as Big Bang yeah. in one glump. Uh, and then number two right up there was Beast. <laughs> they were the second best selling, uh, digitally, the second best selling group of this year. And that is not something to sneeze at. And, they hung in there at number eight on physicals, so keep kind of keeping them at three overall. Um, so, what do you did you get an impression of Beast this year? Actually, like I know that I like like I know the releases that they put out this year, but it just it wasn't kind of the style of stuff that I like from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of came out. I was excited about it while it was out. And then as it faded, it faded. Yeah. And that's just my take on it personally, you know? Yeah. Um, I think there, there were good solid tracks. I think they just didn't catch my attention, uh, as much as I would, I would mm-hmm. like them to, uh, which is a shame, I think. But in the end, they did what they needed to do and they, they had a, another solid year. Uh, so we, we, we definitely have to give them the props for that. They had uh, solid performances, uh, solidly performing uh, videos, and holy crap, now I remember. God damn it. Dude, you're in trouble, Maker. That bandana, come on. <laughs> now I remember. Now it's coming back to me. Are you looking at <laughs> that <laughs> bandana? <laughs> it's like I blocked it out of my memory, that bandana. It's like, dude. Is, isn't it that weird thing that, that that you forget the two people in Troublemaker are in groups? <laughs> like Hiana, I I I, I, like, I you know Hiana, I know who Hiana is, but I I forget that he's in a group, and I forget that he even exists. Um, <laughs> but I forget that he's in this group, and I forgot that he was in Beast. But like, uh yeah, I just got remembered, and I just got reminded, and I just got reminded about goddamn that bandana. Seriously. Who decided right. that that was a good idea? I, I want to say, fucking, fucking <laughs> troublemaker. As, as weird as me and me and you thought it was gonna be, is really fucking good, right? Yeah. But you gotta instantly think that pairing of Hiana and that dude, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that there's no other way to think about it. It's not like it's um, Yona and GD. It's not like it's Yona and Young. It's not like it's Yona, Yona and Rain, you know? It's like yeah. Yona and the dude from Beast. Yeah. Mm. It's like... And, <laughs> and I, I'll reiterate what's been said before. Uh, let's just be real. Uh, in that relationship, Yona would wear the pants. Uh, <laughs> she would... All right. 
crush him like a toy. Hold on, you, um, you threw one in here all of a sudden. That yes, because I remember uh, that I I, I I I didn't have them in the the dock, but BAP for all the drama that they finished uh, with this year, they did have another high octane. And I guess high octane, which probably led to <laughs> them wanting to get out of their contract. Uh, but another high octane year with, uh, a couple of releases that caught our attention, definitely. Uh, early on with Wait, their first was official. What was new from them this year? For their first official album came this year. <laughs> their uh... actual first album <laughs> after like 15 or 30 <laughs> mini albums and singles that didn't call, that didn't count. <laughs> You know, after 15 or 30, you know, mini albums and singles that didn't count for triggering their first album clause of their contract, (laughs) but still kept them working forever. Yes. Uh, First Sensibility, which had the song Chunsa. One of those mini uh, albums. (laughs) And then, yeah, one of those mini albums that came after. And their their acoustic uh, acoustic album that came after with uh, Where Are You Going? Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, they had their uh, album... uh, Mini first sensibility, which had the song uh, "One Thousand Four Angel," uh, which uh, is yeah, otherwise known okay. as Chunsa. Uh, otherwise known as Chunsa, which again, if you know your Sino-Korean numbers, you know means a thousand four, and can also be angel, Chunsa. Uh, which I, I think we're I like, I like this song. Yeah, we liked the song, and we were kind of surprised that this at the time that this song came out of BAP. <laughs> like this was a departure from their well, sound. Yeah, it is a departure but, from their sound. But you know, I like BAP, so. But it was a good departure from their sound. Like it was a surprisingly good departure, kind of more of a a a, a different style from BAP. You know, more thoughtful ballad song. It was well done. Like, they, they par- performed it well. The video was cool and weird and interesting. And there was, uh, there was a moment where, uh, one of the members, uh, is looking at a, a reflection of himself and he's, he's pointing a gun at it and then he points the gun at himself. And, and it's like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> and then there's, uh, there's some ribs in the field like like that moment uh when bugs bunny was uh was fighting that uh the 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 vulture that went uh, yeah. the actual vulture and he convinced him that he uh he had died in the desert he was like uh and he found his carrot uh <laughs> but yeah it was it was a cool interesting video and it was a cool song uh and then it was another and you know we had our that uh, acoustic album that i think in the end, kind of underwhelmed us, though it wasn't bad. It just kind of was underwhelming uh, overall. Yeah. And then, of course, they kind of, you know, they did their thing being overworked. <laughs> uh, you know, debuted in Japan, debuted in China, Thailand, and, and Mongolia. Yeah. They, they, they had tours in, like, uh, in the Philippines and, and Russia and, and Antarctica and uh that and all in one weekend uh and 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 you know surprisingly enough they that 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 wasn't good for their health and it turns out they they, they needed to to take a break yeah <laughs> we all know what happened then. <laughs> yeah we're gonna talk about that more and more all right so we got another uh, one we got another one uh, so this is a group that we have an interesting you i know you have an interesting relationship with because uh this is Vix. We know Vix fans. Yeah, I know you Vix. definitely know Vix fans. Uh, Vix yeah. is is a group that is always in there in there as one of those groups with the solid fandoms and a group with that has always had interesting concepts that are kind of a little bit out there. They're you know, kind of go, either where it's like uh, voodoo dolls or, or like robots or some shit. Um, this time, uh, they came back with their album Error and definitely made a splash, definitely made an impact. It was a, it was a solid song. It was a odd video <laughs> where they were making. I know Vix fans Android. liked it. Yes. <laughs> like, um, I can. 
The thing about VIX is, is that uh, it, it may, they might not be for everyone. They're very much a boy band lover's boy band, uh, I, I would say. Like, they are very much kind of at the core. Uh, they do interesting, cool things, but they are very much at the core of being, like, boy bands for people who love, like, like K-pop boy groups. Um, but I, I, the, overall, the, the, what you can say positively about them is that the releases are always interesting. They're always, uh, they always have a, an, a, a unique concept. They always kind of think out an interesting concept in general for the video and the song and, uh, and they perform it well. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, the, I, 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 though I'm not a fan of the, the kind of on the nose, uh, dance move of, putting the horns in your neck and be, having it be the unplugging yourself thing. Uh, <coughs> it worked for them and it, it works in the video. It probably doesn't work. In the, the It's probably hard to make it work in a non-video. And God damn it, what is that thing on your head? <laughs> Speaking of yeah. things that people put on their heads that we blacked out on. Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody decided to put somebody's pants leg on somebody's head. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we talked about that at length on when we reviewed this video, we can, we, in the episode called, what is that on your head? <laughs> what is that thing on your head? Uh, and you can go back and check it out. But overall it was a solid video and I loved seeing Young G, uh, as I've kind of, it was the process going back to what we were talking about yesterday with girl groups, the process of kind of falling in love with Young G as a new member of Kara. Uh, seeing her kind of uh, uh, perform here in this video, where she didn't really have to do much, <laughs> but stand there and look pretty. Um, I don't know. It was a pretty solid release. What was uh, in the end? Kind of what was your impression of kind of seeing uh, Vix's comeback this year? It was eh. The, you 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 want to know how eh it was? I just had this realization that I was like. Didn't they put something else out? Wasn't it this? And then I realized it was another group that we left off the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, Vix. Vix had us all. They're always pretty much uh, kind of consistent in the, having their fandom and whatnot. Uh, so, and they they succeeded within their fandom and vix it was it was well loved by vix fans and other people kind of dug it too I, and i and i i, I definitely kind of uh enjoyed uh what it was uh but moving on to some more uh solid uh, releases. hold on can i can i throw one in between here that yes they had a, a year but it, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest year which was boyfriend um, Ah, boyfriend they did, I, they yeah, they did have a release this year. Yeah, and then I, I realized that, like, and I forgot. I, I remember them having a year this year with with uh, Seventh Color and an obsession. Um, like, and no, which, obsession was the, oh, yeah, which, the CD, I think. Yeah, the, yeah, the, um, they had solid uh, music shows wins. Uh, yeah, I, I, this one was definitely not on my radar, but go on. <laughs> um, but no, so they're, they're a group that's been around for, I think, three or four years. Uh, and I think this year was their strongest year since they've been out, but it still wasn't that great with everything else that kind of came out around them. Like, they kind of got yeah. lost in the mix, which is probably why they weren't on your radar, even though they did well this year. You know, because you, like you said, they had music shows and wins, and and uh, they 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 had a pretty good year. But I think they still kind of lost out to what the fever of everyone else around them is. You know, yeah. Uh, they are they are going to have solid backing. They're 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 a group that I've never really kind of followed extensively. Uh, though they are yeah. in kind of a. Uh, on the same, they are on the same label as Muck Earl's Sistar. Um, and I do see stuff about them because I subscribe to the Starship, uh, YouTube page. But yeah, and I just never end up getting around to kind of checking them out again because it's just, we, I, I'm less boy group centric than I am, uh, girl group centric. <laughs> so it takes a bit of 
of uh to to kind of get me to check out a group uh kind of like and, and so they kind of fall into my uh, out of my radar and i tend to make me forget about them uh kind of like i just remembered mm-hmm. i forgot about uh team top and i'm pretty sure team top had a, a release this year as well i think uh, they had like two songs and then they fucking dropped on the radar <laughs> seems uh, they were missing just like their song missing uh <laughs> yeah and uh and neil is still weird looking <laughs> that that dude is that that dude's lips are just too big like i i just don't understand how those lips <laughs> are oh, God. it's just on that face yeah i and then how it comes together and and then how people are like all up on his dick like he's not a good looking dude no, this is how this is how girl groups ended up going two hours because we fucking started getting it okay, on yeah, people's yeah, okay, okay, all right. Anyways, uh, we got so let's go on the, the God. Let's go to God because it's something that I I all I'd almost forgotten about. Uh, God came back this year. Uh, no, I I, a- I did forget about God. Let's put that out there. I forgot yes. about God. PD almost uh, forgot about God. I forgot about God. <laughs> But they came back after nine years, and it's oh, it's. I think it, we should definitely talk about them because they're they are one of the uh, I'd say Gen One original idol groups. They were back there, you know, back in the day, one of the like forefront idol groups in the late nineties, um, and you know, in the the years since their previous album, they've kind of all done their thing, been through their their things, you know uh been through the struggles one in particular you know uh kind of had their ups and downs and then they finally kind of came back you know on their 15th year anniversary you know 15 Mm -hmm. years since they debuted like nine years since their previous release like all together and actually and i I went back and i checked out the song that they released and it was a fun track that really was a fun jam like the song saturday night and it was a fun jam. It was a funny video. Like the, the idea yeah. that these, they're having these delusions of, you know, being, being these like fun loving dudes and they're, they're having these party times randomly in moments. And then you like see from outside a perspective and people are looking at them like they're crazy as hell. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, God damn it, Jupiter. Why are you spilling soju all over the cart bar? It's like, <laughs> like the the, the the car bar lady, he imagines her as a hot chick, and then you see the security footage, and he's like doing craziness all by himself, and people are trying to restrain him and take him away. And it is just a fun video, and it is just a cool thing to see from God. And you see Kim Tae Woo taking his kid to school, <laughs> like uh, it is, and then like the the one member getting screamed at and spit at by the by the, by his boss, and it's like. Uh, yeah. It is just a fun video. Like I love, I, I, I you got to appreciate the the groups that have been there for this long, like God. Yeah, and especially when they're they're willing to make fun of themselves like that. Yeah, like that. That's always a great thing. It's always great. And June Park, and like I said, you got to check. I, I will say again, you got to check out the new season of Roommate because June, the, the the you know the tan looking dude with blonde hair he is ridiculous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is hilarious on that show like he is uh he is a big ball of energy he doesn't know how to restrain himself like uh because he's you know he's he's an american kid he doesn't know how to be demure or like uh understated or shy or anything he's just a ridiculous and hilarious <laughs> and he's he's 45 like years old and like <laughs> Because everybody's young, and it, it's uh, it's so much fun. He, and him and him and Jackson are adorable together. Because you know he he kind of because it's JYP family, so he kind of takes care of them, which is cool. Uh, and it's so cool to see. Yeah, God, another. Uh, it's good to see uh, a group like that back. It, it's something that I don't have yeah. as personal history with them, but looking back at who they were, I can appreciate what they yeah. mean for what I pre- what I like now and why they are the foundation that created a lot of what I like now. G-O-D. 
Great. GOD. Mm-hmm. All right. So All right. something else. Something else I was excited for that's going to make picking a winner for me really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, Block, Block B. B. So Block B had an interesting year. Block B had an interesting <laughs> year for, for promotions, which kind of gets into. Uh, so Block B were uh, going to date, uh, going to come back this year with Jackpot. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not to bring everything down, around the time that they were going to come back with Jackpot. Uh, the unfortunate incident with uh, the Sewall Ferry uh, tragedy uh, happened, and the entire industry kind of yeah. came to a halt. Uh, so they had to kind of regroup. Every kind of you know they 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 kind of regrouped. They kind of halted their promotions for that song, and then they came back with a new promotion single from the same album. Finally, coming out with the album uh, with her. Uh, you know, it was the title mm-hmm. track. It was a promotional song, and. It was a fantastic promotional track. They had already released Jackpot, which, which by the way, that's not short change that track because that track I jammed to that track. Oh no, uh, yeah, just fucking Jackpot! Like, Jackpot is a good fucking song, and like okay. Block B did not hold any mental space for me as a group before this year, really. Like I knew of Block B, there were Block B songs that I thought were okay, but this year, like fucking solidified Block B for me, up until something happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that on on on, on a couple of days, <laughs> in a couple of days about some disappointments. But well, let's not get that into that just yet. Uh, Block B had Jackpot and had her. Uh, Jackpot was a really fun kind of. Bridging the gap between the sound from Very Good, which was, I think, a, a really fantastic track, uh, that swaggish, intense, in your face song, kind of turning mm-hmm. that down and then bridging it over to this new album and new style where it was more energetic and cute, but Block B style, <laughs> like not cute, but Block B cute. And mm-hmm. you know, it started with Jackpot, uh, and then her kind of f- sealed the deal right after it, and was just it was the jam, yo. It was it was my jam for for quite oh, yes. a while. Like I I just could not stop playing this. Like any moment that I had where I had my headphones I mean, in my ears or t- riding the bus, I was like, Jesus, to the little hit up, I was like, oh, and I mean. My Block B has never really been a group that takes their self full on serious, but like you said, they do have this swagger about them that that's really fun, you know. Um, but these these two songs really added a lot more fun to it than I think we've had in general. Yeah, like it was just some fun, like energetic tracks, like. Her is just so freaking catchy. Like the 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 perform it's performed oh, yes. well, it's written well. Like Zico is, is you know, he's stretching, you know, uh flexing his like composition chops with this track. Like uh you know, he had his hand all over this like album and uh and and it really showed well. Like it shows the talent he has when he you know, he's he sits down and puts you know, puts pen to paper and decides to Put some, put together some like music for Block B, like it was a really well done song. That and for goodness sake, he raps with an ostrich. How damn it! Like <laughs> Zico's rapping with an ostrich. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Block B's her was just a fantastic track and a solid uh, release this year. Oh my god! Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, uh, like the, the whole thing. Like you said, jackpot, her, like, and then the kind of the rest of the songs on these album is really fun, and it's just like, it just gives you that sense of like, why wasn't I paying attention to Block B? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, why weren't you? <laughs> uh, oh, not, that's not Showtime. Uh, and then of course the the big group that always kind of is consistently at the at the forefront uh, when you're talking about boy groups. Uh, they had a lot of controversy this year, yes, but they also had a big solid release this year, uh, which was EXO, uh, 
with mm-hmm. you know they they came back you know much Expo. anticipated comeback from EXL uh with a uh, overdose and it oh turned out God. to be it was a, it was just a so solid track fucking good dude like EXO overdose like spawned memes too like yes. <laughs> smoke it <laughs> to like go black <laughs> God damn. It, but it's track. just like fucking EXO, dude. Like so, it's just like <laughs> it. It was EXO was this like it was the oh they're gonna try to be like Super Junior. You know what I'm saying? Like like yeah. that's the that's the thing you got from EXO at first, and you're like oh they're gonna try to be the new Super Junior with all those guys, you know? Yeah. And you're like ah. And, and year like, after year, dude, yeah. they fucking smash. They're so fucking good at what they do. Yeah, and it, it is they 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 you know SM really puts together just great stuff for them because they know that they're their you know their their golden child. I mean, and for a reason, they yeah. all really do well yeah. in these performances. They picked the right guys. I mean, uh, you know, all the, the drama aside from, from, you know, <laughs> that happened throughout the year, th- musically and creatively speaking, it was just another solid year for them. Like, it's very easy to kind of think, uh, EXO and they're, 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 you know, they're, they only exist because their fandom supports them and, and blah, blah, blah. And they just, you have to deal with like, exotics and like whatever blah, blah. and it's hard to it's easy to kind of for somebody cynical to kind of try to di- dismiss them but they're at the top mm-hmm. for a reason they 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 know how to mm-hmm. uh put music that will will nail their fan base and at the same time be compositionally competent and well done uh, they don't know that nobody wears Kangol hats anymore, but that's 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 a whole other <laughs> think, issue to do. With. I think that one is just more having fun than anything else. Yeah, but still, uh, he's Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady. Because they're all yeah. they're all dressed really nineties in that. So yeah, it's understandable. Uh, the pelvic thrust, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and the dancers. <laughs> God damn, it was probably gross. Uh, and then, you know, they spawn, they, they, they spawn shows, you know, appearing on, on, on TV shows, appearing on this here and there, like constantly getting work. Dio, uh, they're, they're acting. Dio's performance on, on It's Okay That Love was phenomenal. Like, not just good for an idol actor, but really good. Like, that, I forgot that he was a kid from Excel. I just, I got, I forgot that he was an idol kid. I just, he was that character. Uh He was that character and he embodied it. Like it was really good. And then, you know, Chanyol was, uh, you know, for all the things that we, we could say about roommate season one, Chanyol was actually fun and cute on that. And that was part of that. And I kind of am a little bummed that he didn't stay to be part of season two. Uh, though, you know, he, he made room for Sunny. So, you know what? I, I, I'll take that <laughs> instead, but, uh, he, he was good and, and I liked him and, and it, it, it is, I, I do feel for, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say XOLs. That is a dumb cl- fan club name. XOL. Like, no, it's exotics. <laughs> it's exotics. I don't care what you say, SM. Their fans are exotics. <laughs> So I do, I do sympathize with the exotics having to kind of go through a lot of stuff this year, but, uh, uh, they, you know, it was when we're talking about career and solidifying their status, EXO did have another solid year musically, uh, to say the least. Like it, it, it was fantastic. And I mean, how, how would you say? It's hard because it's easy to crown them as the top, but they're always the top. Like, yeah. I think I want to go with how, I want to go with what, how I decided A Pink was the, it was A Pink's year this year. Uh, and say it's, it was Block B's year in a way of solidifying their status. They're our favorite and I... they had the biggest upswing as far as solidifying a high tier status for themselves. 
I do. I think. I think. Looking at it and and thinking about the rest of the list, the only other people like so. Let's say top three, right? Top three has to be. 2 p.m. BT. Well, all right. Top four. 2 p.m. BTS, Block B, and AXO, right? Then you knock it down to the top two. It's AXO and Block B. And when I really, 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 really kind of think about how the year rolled out, I remember Block B. Yeah. Block B made that impact musically throughout the year that you want your group to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, and as much as I love EXO, and as much as we we just said, EXO is always that dominant force that's there. They're always the 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 guys that you are reaching to overtake. If if uh, Big Bang hasn't released an album that year, <laughs> they're always like I, I almost wanted, that I almost wanted to jokingly say, "Hey, this summer we had a big comeback from Big Bang." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I realized yeah. it was too sad and I, wanted, I didn't want to bring the whole podcast down <laughs> but yeah it's what you were saying <laughs> yeah um, because I mean like le- like legitimately if, if Big Bang was in this list it would, I, it would be between Big Bang and EXO you know what I'm saying like yeah. but I mean I, it, it has to be Block B it has to yeah, be, it has to be. I, I would say no way EXO is still that hard to climb wall as they're still the undisputable champs of board groups in you know k-pop but if we were to say how do mm-hmm. juku's group boy uh, how do juku's boy group of 2014 would be block b i think uh yeah i think that's basically what we're saying uh they they have more they like they've been consistently climbing and i think this was that year that they you know boom put that stamp on it like this is who block b is this is our sound this is our personality like you know the personalities of block b you know what i'm saying like those guys have that that power to stand out or whatever um and there there are those guys in exo but i don't think i think uh, the sheer numbers kind of heard it but it, it's just one of those things like block b is just doing it man like yes. they're living good and i i mean we also really liked bap this year but there was a lot that held bap back from from really dominating this year and they might not yeah. be here next year <laughs> you know well, so who knows it might be right? look what happened to block b though we have a block though. Yeah, they 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 can they broke away, got free, and got and found their own home. But yeah, block B, 2014 Tali Juku stamp of approval for all that is worth. <laughs> um. All right, so let's talk about it, uh even, some of our with some of co- <laughs> We were rooting for. Right. We were all rooting for you. Um. <laughs> let's talk about some other things. So, in 2014 right, board group. Surprises. It's, yeah, let's talk about our surprises. We'll, Kaz, you can start us off. What would be kind of one of our big surprises <laughs> this year? Um, if you if you listen to us at all during comebacks, you know one of our biggest surprises was the fact that the Bongtown Boys weren't terrible this year, and we couldn't shit on them. Like, <laughs> we were just like, it, it happened. So it just happened, like for both of us in, in like these separate occasions of like hearing a, a bts song and being like oh this is pretty cool. who is this oh fuck it's bts shit is anyone <laughs> did anyone see that hey nobody saw me jamming out to bts it's cool <laughs> like because like, we, 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 kinda... we were yeah. so we were already over bts when they debuted we were so over them by the time they came out we were just like they're terrible. Their style is shit. There's no upside from here for them. Like we were so ready to just like start digging graves, man. <laughs> like, yeah. We're like we're and and it was one of those things where we were like, it's gonna be popular, it's gonna be annoying, and it's gonna be stupid. And and that debut, that's what it was. It 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 was really popular. It was fucking annoying to anybody who really generally likes K-pop. It was just like, oh, they're pretty boys, so everybody's going to jump on the pretty boy bandwagon. But at the same time, like you said, they came around into this year. They put in work. They solidified their music style. They did all those things that we constantly talk about as a group that you have to do. And, I mean, we couldn't deny them. Yeah. You got to give them their props. 
Uh, but yeah, beat Bantan Sonyan. Surprise! Uh, another, I think another surprise was this year was a group that we kind of had our, you know, peripheral vision on. We kind of noticed and were iffy on when they first was kind of debuting, especially with like, with a lot of what the information we were getting on them for was. Uh, and especially again, speaking of, uh, uh, Block B's former home coming out of Stardom Entertainment, uh, was Top Dog. Our, I think a big surprise yeah. for us was looking back how Top Dog actually impressed us. I mean, I, we wouldn't necessarily put them on like the the one of the higher groups yet, but they did put some solid songs together this year, especially uh, the song Aradio, uh, which kind of really did some unique things of incorporating like classical uh, Korean instrumentation with uh, you know a hip hop sound like of all things. <laughs> Uh, and it was a solid track, and then you know, like did, different solo releases. Did Top Dog come out this year? The song Top Dog from Top Dog. Yeah, it came out this year. Okay, which was another. I mean, aside yeah, that from the a... Harpo hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and those fucking outfits. Yes, those outfits. But yeah, that one was a song that impressed, and, and yeah, it, even like you had noticed that, like, wow, this is a really cool song. You you brought it up on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it was and actually I, pretty yeah. cool. I mean, it was, and I mean, like, it, it may be one of those things where people are like, "Well, why weren't they really mentioned?" It, they were kind of beginning of the year. And then that was kind of it that we really got from Top Dog this year, but yeah. it was impressive, you know. And and yeah, we were kind of, looking forward to hearing more from them, and we just didn't get a lot more from them. At least, yeah, at least not anything that kind of really caught our eye. And I would say they didn't have a a huge year, but uh, they did surprise us. Um, and then the a, a couple other things that surprised us this year. Um, hey, we're talking about EXO. Uh, so um. <laughs> So something happened. So I think it was it was May. Yeah, it was May because we uh, we were f- going uh, just independently. We were uh, getting ourselves ready to attend a little uh, anime convention known as Anime Central. Uh, we were all kind of flying. I, I think you were flying the next. No, no, you were flying that same day. We were both kind of just making our way to Chicago, and I imagine independently we were keeping track of the of the social networks. And I look at my, 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 my social networks and I look at stuff and I see Chris, uh, files lawsuit to nullify contract and leave XO. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> and that became, uh, and, and I was like, what, what? And then that became our running gag when we we're trying to find that Chris jersey and like, we <laughs> like, Hey, it's like the outdated jersey of your, of the guy that's no longer on your team, you know? <laughs> and that became our bit. And that was, but it was one of our big surprises this year, and then that f- being followed up just recently with Luhan uh, also leaving again. Another member of XOM, uh, another yeah. ultimately Chinese member. Uh, you know, Chris being Chinese Canadian, uh, Luhan being uh, uh, native Chinese. It. And of course, this is something that has connections to the history with SM, them kind of joining Hanging. You know, everybody remembers, uh, Hanging's, uh, departure from Super Junior, uh, and, uh, the fallout that came from that, uh, th- which is something that I don't really have uh, any personal experience with, but I, I d- it's definitely something that was thrown out there and I noticed was repeated often. Uh, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, uh, it, it, so it was, it was definitely, it was, <laughs> It was a huge surprise and kind of an odd drama for the year. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's still playing out at this point. Uh, We're still in mediations with, and stuff. Yeah, so it's one of these things. It's probably going to roll into next year, and it's just going to continue to be this weird thing that goes on. Uh, we're also going to have to still see if we can get our hands on those two jerseys. <laughs> so, uh, there's there's only be... two at the moment. Yeah, and now it's going to be hard. Now, at this point, it's going to be hard. We should have did it when we had the chance, but at, the, at now in this transition it's going to be hard because those jerseys well i don't know because a lot of those people just kind of carry shit year to year you know what i'm saying and like yeah, if they, they don't get of, rid of it they still have it 
Yeah, and they they kind of I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna guess probably don't have uh don't aren't beholden to <laughs> to supplies from official means maybe. Yeah, as evidenced by my Senor Shade hat over there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe aren't necessarily beholden to official supply means. <laughs> if you catch my drift, uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to those cons, <laughs> so so we might still be able to get some jerseys. Uh, that at the very least, that's going to be our mission at Asin uh, this year. <laughs> uh, if we don't yeah. do it before then, uh, look forward to that. Uh, but yeah, you know, we had Exo's uh kind of drama with their with uh, SM, and that followed up recently with, and we kind of chronicled it. Uh, BAPs. Uh, big lawsuit all together yeah. just as a group law uh, suing to get us out of their their contracts and really once again putting out their the the slave contract back into everybody's public consciousness you know back into that you know remembering the conflict diamond aspect of being a k-pop fan like uh the fact that these these idols are usually overworked, underpaid, and uh, and uh, and not well taken care of. Um, BAP was crazy was a crazy thing to come out of nowhere, and it was something that we did, weren't necessarily anticipating. We when we heard that their like South American tour was being wrapped up. We kind of were hoping we, they were just getting a, a quick rest, but then we kind of found out mm-hmm. what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's one of those things, it's surely very, very crazy, but at the same time, it's one of these things that we're talking about. Me and you have come to really like BAP. Um yeah. And and have a lot of respect and, and admiration for the guys over at BEP, and we're like, you know, we 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 want them to stay BEP. They work really well together, and we're hoping they end up with like, like you said, with a block B situation where they can get out and get somewhere else and still be BAP. You know, yeah. So I think that that could be the 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 best case scenario at the very least. Even if they're not technically BAP, at the very least, they're all still together making the music that they like uh, yeah. and still delivering the sound that we like Yeah, in all the kind of its different aspects. So, uh, But I think, uh, once again, kind of, and we're going to talk about it when we talk about our overall feelings uh, in our final episode. We're going to talk about overall things of, of the status, stat, status of the industry. Uh but it's definitely something that could be a clarion call for a big change, a big shift in the industry. Like I said yesterday, the big pivot. This is kind of a big transition time for K-pop uh, and East Asian pop culture in general, and hopefully for the better. Uh, let's talk about uh, before we wrap up. Let's talk about some disappointments. Uh, we only had a couple. I had point. one. Uh, yeah. Uh, my main kind of disappointment was K much. I mean, they they're not necessarily a big hyped group, but I kind of was hoping more from more from kind of the boy group out of the the company that gave us Crayon Pop. The song was good, mm-hmm. it was okay, but they didn't really put anything out there that was too impressive, and they didn't really follow it up. Um, yeah. They're they're good guys and and they they are fun and, and they're fun and that, personalities when you see them on Chrome Entertainment. But uh, yeah, that album cover is so nineties it hurts. Yes. Like that <laughs> album cover, so fucking like early K-pop. You would think they're one of the originators of K-pop if you just saw that album cover. <laughs> yeah, you were like, how long have you guys been out? Damn, you look young. <laughs> like oh oh oh, you're new. Oh shit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. But I mean, hopefully, what they'll do is they just kind of wanted to get out there, and what we'll get from them is they'll they'll start to put in some of their own ideas of things and and kind of speak their minds to how things should sound, and we'll we'll get the K much sound next year. You know? Yeah. I think uh, I think a lot of the hints, a lot of the things I'm really observing is that Chrome Entertainment is a very very, very well run. I think not a big company, but a very kind of 
competently done and a company that uh, is run with uh, treating their artists well, like like that they're not this ridiculously shit run company, like like you see even like in well, the big labels. Uh, well, we used to think that about SM. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, they're a big yeah, machine. SM like is we, not really well. Well, SM is a is a big machine, but then we realized that you know that machine kind of. <laughs> had some kinks in it but like it, it seems like a cool company Crime entertainment seems like a, a yeah. company of cool people like they're cool people uh, remember when we used yeah. to really like jyp entertainment <laughs> remember when we used to think there was the, there was a big three in k-pop <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, this one is is very much more for me and closer to my heart of the disappointments of the year for boy groups and it's super junior uh super junior had a new and i mean the original super junior not super junior m the original super junior got back together so put out some new releases this too. year <laughs> That's yeah the song and and it it just it fell short you know like i just it 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 tried to be too new but at the same time give you that reminder that it's super junior you know and it it sounded like super junior and it looked like super junior but it just didn't have that feel of super junior you know yeah um and it's disappointing it's disappointing on a couple of levels just cuz of the legacy of uh, it, the Mama Sita, it was it was a it was an okay song. I mean, I, I, seeing kind of the tears is for it. I, I knew I was anticipating it to be a clusterfuck, and it it kind of was, <laughs> especially yeah. with like mixing having matadors in the Wild West. What? Is, <laughs> what? How is there a matador yeah. in the West? Like, that's yeah. like what? what? N- no, <laughs> no, like. It makes metaphors. Like, what are you doing? Uh, and it is disappointing because this was the return, uh, the return, uh, comeback for, uh, the leader, Lituk, who has, <laughs> has, uh, to say the least, been through, been through some stuff this year and, you know, just got discharged from the military. And this was his return track. Um, uh, yeah. and you wanted, you wanted a, a you wanted a, a better track. I mean, it succeeded. Yeah. Of course, it won music shows because yeah. Super Junior has fans, and music yeah. shows are for fandoms. So, so I mean, they did their thing. And I mean, there was also This Is Love, which was kind of closer to what you expect from Super Junior, but it still just it didn't pop. It didn't have that that Super Junior in it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. It didn't come pre-fucked like uh, Asian Junkie <laughs> says, but <laughs> uh, but it did have Heechol wearing a hat, which you know what, Heechol with long hair wearing a wearing a, a a hat, at least it has that, at least it has. That. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that was kind of our, uh, and I definitely uh, I share your, your your it was something that disappointed both of us. Even me, I'm not uh a big proponent of uh, Super Junior. I kind of was expecting some cool stuff, and then... Uh, I mean, uh, until the teasers hit. Then I was expecting the, expecting the clusterfuck <laughs> I got, but... <laughs> Yeah, like do you and, remember? I mean, do you remember how excited I was? I was like, "Yo, it's 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 fucking OG Super Junior. It's not this fucking Super Junior M. Like, not that Super Junior M is bad. I just, it's not Super Junior for me, you know. Like, um, so yeah, yeah. Also, Shiwon should never grow a real mustache ever again. Uh, he should stick with fake ones. <laughs> Going yeah. back to that Super Junior M. Seriously, mm-hmm. S- no, no, shave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Heechel, never change. Just, just keep doing you. Just keep doing you. Don't yeah. do nothing but be you. Uh, and Shindong, you too. Just keep doing you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, Super Junior, we, we, we can only hope for more, more good things. I, I think, 
2014 was an uh it was an a meteor a meteor year for boy groups than we i think we anticipated we uh now that we actually kind of sat down and talked about it it was a pretty solid year for boy groups especially boy groups that we liked and some surprising like releases that kind of caught our attention that we we didn't anticipate like we got some some kind of we got surprised (laughs) by something this year uh and positively speaking (laughs) we got surprised yeah so so another solid year. Um, do you have any predictions for boy groups in 2015? Um, I'm expecting to see like uh, kind of a bigger push from Block B. Uh, apparently, the 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 R dominant force, the Hollywood dominant force that we'd like to push, Big Bang is supposed to release something. And with kind of with the way things have been going, and and kind of the fever and the pace of everything with YG, I'm actually legitimately expecting something from big bang next year yeah because so, somebody uh, else is putting out their rumors if, if, if yg says something it's a complete <laughs> lie but it's seven years out- off yeah. <laughs> like, yeah but we got some but rumors. it kind of the pace of what everybody's saying and how everything's rolling um you know like uh top is kind of wrapping up whatever movies and stuff and and being the supermodel that he is <laughs> um thing that he's doing uh gd did his world tour tae young's wrapped up his world tour he's gonna do some collabo stuff with cl apparently um Day Song is wrapping up his Japanese stuff. sangaro has been kind of already done for the year, so it, it kind of leads to that pace that most likely planets are aligning. <laughs> yeah, that we're, that we're gonna get big back, and and just kind of like with with uh two any one, and I mean we you know we got a two any one album this year, you know, so yeah, Maybe. things are looking good, you know, things are looking Maybe. good. Um, um, my other than bold- that, the only other thing I have is is more of a you gotta fucking show your ass kind of thing, which is Icon is going to premiere either really early next year or they're, you're gonna start to see shit at the really well. Yeah, they're gonna either premiere really early this you know in this next year, and if they even want any kind of legitimacy. They're going to have to take everything Winner did and fucking times ten it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to even be cared about. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be a key thing. Uh, yeah, because there's going to be, gonna be uh, eyes on them. Bobby's going to be an important foundation for that, uh, and then you know it, it is. It's going to be interesting to see Bobby and Bi. Uh, they're going to be an important mm-hmm. foundation for that, and uh, we'll have to anticipate. Um, I. Uh, uh, my bold prediction: I want, I want a Big Bang comeback, and I want Day Sung to be a permanent member of Running Man. You know, <laughs> let's reunite the Dumb and Dumber brothers on a regular basis. Yeah, but that's I think the big thing for me, of course, is Big Bang. I want, more, I want Big Bang. I've been waiting for how long? God damn it, YG. God damn it, YG. Yeah, since since uh, alive, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's it uh, for our boy group talk. Uh, we we got a lot of in there. We tomorrow, uh, we're gonna have a special little, I guess on in our regular, you know, our usual Wednesday time, we're gonna have a special little mini episode with uh, a special guest. Uh, we had Bryce Castillo, aka Neshcom, uh, on the show, and he actually had a lot of fun with him. Uh, talking about, mm-hmm. we, we got him, we, 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 we showed, we, we taught him Guillaume <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we talked about, uh, Yumi Ray and we talked about Bobby. <laughs> God dang it, Bobby. Um, there's your teaser. And remember, yeah. hanging out with your friends and high five. Hey, let's be hip hop cats. <laughs> All let's right. I'm going to not take a shower now. Oh, okay. Let's high five on 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 your right. High five. <laughs> All right. Wait, what? <laughs> the other direction. Trying to do things on the internet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. That's it for us. Uh, like I said, not gonna do a spiel. You know the things. You know the show. Follow, subscribe, share, like. 
Uh, keep keep st- st- tuned all throughout this week. You're in special. Keep at it. <laughs> Chat room awards also. Did you have a stroke during that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, until next time. Uh, hasta los huevos.